Hello, you. Well, before we move forward, I just want to jump back and clarify something that I said last week. I know that I said it felt unreasonable for us to think that emotions and things like love and the pain of separation are due simply to the chemicals in our brain, um, but I want to make clear that, that the chemicals in our brain are related, that they are involved. And in fact, it's really interesting how it all works. Um, some researchers came out with a book in the year 2000 called A, the a General Theory of Love. And in it, they, in it, they talked about limbic resonance or limbic regulation. And your limbic system is back here. Um, it's at the base of your brain, and it's made up of the part of your brain that regulates uh, memories and emotions, and it contains your sense of smell. And they said that that, together with your nervous system and a couple of hormones called norepinephrine and dopamine, are what create the sense of empathy and what makes it possible for us to feel like we connect with one another. And the way this plays out is they said that it's very similar to, for example, that emotions are contagious. So if you walk into a room of angry people, it will make you feel angry. Or if you're talking with someone who is very happy, it can make you feel happy. And they say that it's these chemicals, this coordination between your limbic system and your nervous system that makes us actually feel like we connect with one another, that we create those bonds with one another. And it's, an, it's a really interesting, fascinating um, thought to think about the, the, the mechanisms behind some of the emotions that we feel um, in a slightly related topic. Um, one of the greatest neurosurgeons of the 20th century is a man named um, Dr. Wilder Penfield. And what he did is he was trying to map where everything was in the brain. And one of his goals was to find out where the mind was located. Is there a difference between the mind and the body or is the body just all there is? So it's very similar to kind of what we're talking about. And what he was doing at the same time is he was working with children that had epilepsy and he was trying to figure out where the seizures came from. And so he would take out just different parts of their brain to see, again, this was in the early days of neurosurgery, to see if he could figure out which area was causing the seizures so that the seizures would stop. And what he found is that even in children who'd had up to half of their brain removed, that they still retained their sense of self, that their mind was there, that they had a free, um, they were able to make free choices, that they had a, an awareness of who they were, that they were able to have original and creative thoughts, that, that those things did not go away no matter what part of the brain was affected. And so what he concluded is that the, the brain is like a computer, and that, um, but it seems that the mind is not part of the computer. The mind is something different that is operating the computer. And all of this um, interests me. Um, in fact, years ago, I wanted to be a neurosurgeon, and so I'm just fascinated by the way the brain works. And I think that, again, if we look at who we are, it gives us a clue of what we're here for. It's, well, it's kind of like if you look at this metal box here. If you look at it, it's got these slots that seem to be the size that you, you know, regular regulation piece of bread. And inside are these coils that, that if you plug it in, that they look like they heat up. And they're, they're stimulated by a, by an app, by a button here um, that's a timing mechanism. And so when you look at all the different pieces together, you think, well, all right, this looks like it's going to heat for a certain amount of time and it's just the right size for bread. It's a toaster. And if you look at our brains in the same kind of manner, then you can say, oh, well, clearly relationships are important to us because our brains are wired to connect with one another. Our neurotransmitters receive the same, um, put off the same response when they encounter both physical pain and emotional pain. Our life expectancy is actually tied to the relationships that we have. If you look at all of the ways that the hardware functions, then you can see a little bit the clue of what the purpose is. So sometimes I think people like to look at all the insides and say, oh, well, there's no mystery anymore. There's no point. But that, that would be like understanding how a radio worked and thinking it would no longer play music. Um, the music will still play whether you understand how the radio works or not. Um, relationships are still important. Love is still important. We still experience the pain of separation. 
even when we know how it's working. How it's working doesn't explain why it works. Does that make sense? We look at how something works, we look at how the toaster works, we look at how the radio works, but at the end of the day, the radio still plays music and we still get toast from the toaster, but only if we put the bread in and push the button. You, there's still some um, cooperation that it requires. So just as we're going forward, um, I want you to feel free to dig in and find the answers and find what's behind it all. Because again, if we can examine the things that we do know about who we are as humans, about who we are as people, as, as persons who are in, relating with one another, then it can help us understand the things that we don't know. Why are we here? What are we here for? Do we have a purpose? Um, and it appears that for whatever reason, according to our brains, that relationships are very important. So I appreciate my relationship with you and I hope that you have been having a wonderful week and we're gonna get into new, some new stuff, but I just wanted to clarify and um, it's amazing the way that we work. It's just really cool. So have a great evening, my darling, and I'll talk to you again soon. Take care, love you.